Hey there, this is Brent, and what I'm looking at is a file that I've set up so that we can show an example for using the swipe gesture. So here I am in Flash CS 5.5, and I've created an Air for iOS file. And I have to confess, uh, I didn't make this up all by myself. I did take, if you, if you look at the, uh, like if you go to File and choose New, there's a uh, there are some templates and there's this swipe gallery. Now I did modify it quite a bit, but uh, anyway, I just took it from there and I've applied it. Whoops! Wait, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. Don't save. Anyway, that example that template is for Android, and so I modified it and I've set it up for uh, iOS. So we have on the stage. A giant movie clip and it's got four tiles and I've got this has been given an instance name of tiles so we need to create a document class go ahead and click edit class definition and let's call this swipe example all right here we get a uh, blank swipe example class and let's uh, remember we when we go to code for the uh, API, we want to check to see whether it's uh, available. So we say if multi-touch, and I can go ahead and press control space, come on, control space. Oh, I know what I need to do. Let's save this first, and then I can get code hinting. Go ahead and click save, swipe example. All right, now, so here we get our code hinting. Go ahead, and now it brought in the import statement, and I just pointed at the monitor, and you can't see my fingers pointing. All right. Supports gesture events. That's what we want to know. If it supports gesture events, then we want to init else. Uh, we want to do something. So something else, right? So for our purposes, we're going to say, what you talking about? gestures did you know Gary Coleman lived in Utah did you know that lived in Utah up until he died now he's gone poor guy all right let's go ahead and create our init function we're gonna call it private function init it's not gonna return anything okay now Again, we're working with multi-touch, so we want specifically to work with multi-touch gestures. So remember, we always set the input mode. So we say multi-touch.input mode equals, and then it's the multi-touch input mode. I just press control space to get those code hintings. Dot gesture, that's the one we want. All right, now what that means is when uh, at, from this point on, it's going to be registering, it'll It'll dispatch gesture events. And then now we want to listen for those. So we're going to add uh, to the stage. We're going to say this.stage.add event listener. We're going to listen for the transform gesture swipe event. And then we're going to say handle swipe. Whoops. Awesome. Very simple, very straightforward. Perfect. Okay, now let's create that function. Private function, handle swipe. And it'll receive an event and it'll receive a transform gesture event, right? Okay, now, part of the transform gesture event is an offset. Now we've used the offset in relation to pan, but in this instance, we wanna use it when it's related to gesture swipe the values of the offset x and offset y are going to be positive and negative values. I'm um, sorry, positive and negative one. So what that means then is if I say if I say if event dot offset x equals one, then what that means is it's a positive number and it's actually going to be going so what that means is you've swiped to the right. And if it's a negative one, then 
it uh, swipes, it means you swiped to the left, okay? So notice when I say offset X, that's along the X axis, right? Which is right to left, as opposed to up and down. So what we're targeting then is when we do a swipe gesture, which involves touching the screen and then sliding across and releasing, and there's a certain interval and basically it triggers that event. It just says, okay, you swiped. And then it tells us the direction. If it's a one, that means you swiped to the right. If, if it's a negative one, that means you swiped to the left, specifically on the offset X. This will make sense when we get it running on the device, but I want you to think about this in terms of all you're doing is triggering the, the swipe has occurred and you know the direction. Okay, there's no other information that we're using for this example. So on the stage, we have these tiles. And so when we say swipe, if I said I got a swipe to the left, then I want to then move everything to the left. Now, I have to do that myself. I have to programmatically move the tiles on the screen. So the swipe gesture, all it does is tell us, did you swipe and what direction was it? And so you tell based on the offset. So if I want to know if I went left or right, I look at offset X. So a one means I swiped to the right and a negative one means I swiped to the left. So what we will do then is uh, we need to track certain things. And what I want to know, let me click over here, is I want to know which tile I'm looking at. So currently we're looking at tile one and then we have two, three and four. So I need to track that somehow. So let's create a, a variable that we can track that. And we're gonna call this private var, and we're gonna say current tile. So the current tile, which is a number, equals one. So that tells us that's the current tile. Now, we also wanna know how many tiles we have total so that when you swipe, uh, when you get to the end, we don't want to be, we don't want to continue going that direction. We want to stop and then so that when you swipe the other direction, it keeps going until you run out. So in order to track that, we're going to keep another variable called total tiles. So again, this is just something I stole, made up from the template, the Android Air swipe example. But the point is that you can do whatever you want. Once you know the swipe and you know what direction it is, then you can change your app accordingly. So in this example, we're just sliding a bunch of tiles over, but you could do whatever you want, right? And that's the point. You can uh, create some cool examples. Okay, then we have one more variable that we want to track, and that is a slide counter. And this is in relation to knowing uh, when the tile has finished moving or when it reaches the point that we want it to be. And so we're going to say private var slide counter, and it's also a number, and we're going to set it to zero. And I'll show you what this does in a second. All right, so now if you swipe and on left to right, and you swipe to the right, that means that I want to then move the tile to the right. So that means if the current tile is, let's say, say you're on number, say you're on number two, and I swipe to the right, then I want to go backwards to number one, right? So, but if I'm at number one, I don't want to do anything. So if I say, if current tile is greater than one, so that means I'm at a higher tile, then let's go ahead and we're going to call um, a slide right and we also want to set the uh, current tile change that value so I just say current tile is now one less so minus minus right now the other thing is we can say if uh, so that takes care of the sliding now if it's offset X is equal to one, then we know we're going to the right. Else, if event dot offset X is equal to negative one, then we want to do something else, which is go to 
the left. Now, what happens? How do if we're already to the to the end? We don't want to go that we don't want to go past the end. So we say, all right, if the current title tile is uh, excuse me less than the total tiles, then we can continue to go to the left. So and we're going to say slide left, and these are functions we haven't created yet, but we're going to create them here in a second. All right, current tile plus plus. That means we've incremented it. Okay. Again, this all makes sense. All makes sense when we put it together. All right, let's go ahead and create these other two functions now. Uh, because of the way we're doing this, and again, you can do this however you want. This is just a quick and dirty example. Uh, so we have a private function slide left. Come on, there it is, there it is. Here we go, here we are. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this movement. And the way I'm gonna do that is listen for an enter frame event. So we're gonna say event listener, and we're gonna listen for enter frame, right? And then we're gonna say move tiles left. So that's the function we'll call. And guess what? Private function slide right void tiles.add event listener. And again, we're doing an enter frame. And in this one, we're going to say move tiles. Right. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, let's create those functions, right? We need to figure out what those functions are. So in order to do that, I'm going to look at my notes because uh, I have notes. You can't see them, but I'm going to tell you. So private function move tiles left. Now this will receive an event and it's just an event type, uh, which is, you know, the ender frame is, is of a type event, right? And I like my curly braces on a separate line. It makes it easier for me to read. I like it. Okay, so we have move tiles left and let me just enter the function for move tiles right. Okay. 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 So back up here, basically what happens is we call an event uh, listener. We're going to, for every enter frame, we're going to call this function. So if I say, I want you to slide right, it's going to call that one. If I want you to slide left, it's going to call this one. So if you're going to slide left, um, we want to move the tiles object, the X position. So I'm going to say tiles.x and I'm going to say uh, minus equals and the value that I came up with is 33. Now this is based on the width of this space right here basically. Uh, this width here is about 288 but the actual width the amount of space I'm going to move is like about 330 pixels. And the reason I say negative 33 is that every frame is going to move 33 pixels. Well, after 10 frames, I want it to stop. So this is where the slide counter comes in. So slide counter is zero. And so what I'm doing is I want you to, I'm just kind of incrementing this so that I know how many times I've moved 33 pixels. And so again, I want to say slide counter plus plus. Now we say, okay, if this slide counter is equal to 10, meaning we've hit this method 10 times, we've moved 33 pixels 10 times, then I want to stop. Okay. And the way we do that is we say tiles dot remove event listener right and we we call the same method uh, the same event listener that we created up here we're going to say move tiles left so we we quit the event handler and I want to set the slide counter to zero okay what we've done then 
is a very simple animation. We've simply animated it to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, right? Okay, I'm gonna stop singing now. So in this same example of moving to the right, the we're gonna move the X, we're gonna say plus equals 33. And again, it's the same concept as before. We wanna know how many times, uh, in fact, I'm gonna copy this just for the sake of being speedy. But then, of course, we're saying this, we're removing this event listener. So if we say, hey, if I've already hit 10 times that this is moved to the right 33 pixels, then stop, okay? All right, now, all this code really is just to animate these tiles on the screen. And in the next tutorial, we'll put this on the device and we'll run with it. We're gonna put it on an iPhone and uh, it'll all make sense. All right, stay tuned.